Hey, everybody, it's Pete Carmasino here at Chaykin Analytics. I'm your chief market strategist, and this is our halftime show here on Stock Charts TV. Thanks for joining me each and every week. We kind of go over some different aspects of the ACP platform here on Stock Charts, which is amazing. We love it. And our cool plugin that works alongside with ACP, again, putting fundamental ratings on top of technical charts. And don't forget, we got a little technical inside of our rating as well. So you get a double barrel approach to fundamentals and technicals with an added boost to technicals as well. That's what we like here at Jagan. I know you guys like it uh, at Stock Charts as well. So uh, we make a perfect combination together. And this week, I'm going to start looking at, um, not start looking, but kind of review really uh, the names that have really been under pressure here, but in one specific area, the streaming sector. And I've got some names. I have two ETFs as well uh, that do contain some multiple different tech companies, you know, in general. But we're seeing tech just take it, uh, take a beating here. Obviously, we know it's because of rates. We also know it's because, you know, a potential outlook and maybe a recession uh, caused by rates. And it's sort of a trickle down effect, uh, almost a domino effect, but not not completely. But we're going to look at the charts uh, to kind of look back, see where the signals were to begin with. And that's going to teach you what to look for in the future, right? We're going to look at, again, the rating on the ACP platform. We're going to look at the streaming stocks, how they stand today, and where the potential warnings were uh, just a few months ago, sometimes some just a few weeks ago. So we'll take a look and see what we can see. Let's look at the charts. Okay, everybody, here we are at the ACP platform. And I've got uh, the Apple chart up here. And just looking at the RSI and the MACD, got a few moving averages here. And um, looking at the rating, so we're neutral plus. Now, obviously, Apple's been an incredible uh, name over the years. If I scroll back, I mean, we can see where it's been. Obviously, 2020, everything got oversold. But even prior to that, we know Apple's been in an uptrend. And it's an incredible company um, that we all know and love. So at the same time, um, it is threatening a situation here to me that looks like um, around a 150 level. That's the low here of the year. Obviously, if it breaks there, it doesn't bode well. And we've got some crossover action here in the 20 and the 50. So again, the neutral plus is talking about the fundamentals, right? We do have some technicals and they have been strong, but they're probably breaking down as we can see. So let's go look at Apple here on our chart. And we've got really um, a mixed bag, obviously down about one and a quarter percent today. We're approaching the bottom bands, but strong relative strength. Now this happens and it's going to happen in markets like this. We're, we're getting a market that's really very volatile, uh, really almost nowhere today. The NASDAQ is pretty, I'm sorry, the S&P is pretty much unchanged while the NASDAQ is also unchanged maybe to the upside, but we're seeing bonds sell off, right? So we're getting some uh, divergence in asset classes, but overall a flat market after last week's really down day that was pretty painful. But as you start to look at Apple here, uh, you can just see kind of a sideways trend. Now, some might call this a bullish trend. Others might call this um, sort of a, a range bound trade, which it definitely looks like. And obviously the bottom of that range is right, right around this 150 level. So we have to be careful there um, in the streaming categories in general. Um, Apple is a big player, but they do so much more. Um, they're really a multifaceted uh, tech hardware and storage company but they stream as well. So you've got that on our side. We've got multiple verticals. So if I go over here and I look at Apple on the point and figure chart, which um, I've got put back into my sort of my, uh, my arsenal here because I do like the point and figure style. We're well away from the trend line, but look where that break is, right around the 150. So this point and figure is kind of lining up with what I'm seeing on Chaken. So I would be careful there. Let's move on to Disney. And we'll do this in order again. Um, obviously, a massive breakdown. Look at this gap down here, which will probably come back. Uh, we'll be looking at this in the future sometime and saying, well, if we can fill this gap on the upside, that'd be great. So well, we look for those days ahead. But at the same time, we've got um, a downward trend in our in our midst. And if I pull up Disney here, we've got a bearish rating on it. And don't forget, I forgot to look here. You can see the rating. It's pretty bad, except from an earnings standpoint. Um, but Really, look what started to happen here. I mean, way back a year ago is when the trend started to break. And look what we saw. Now, this is very similar to what we're seeing in Apple today, a little bit of a range-bound sideways trade. But if you start to look at five-year on our particular charts, you can see where it started, right? It started on that breakdown um, 
almost a year ago to the day, really, on the 23rd, uh, just a year and a, and a week ago or so, about 184, and it's bringing it down all the way there. So when it started to break that multi-year low, that 160, and then obviously this level here, which was around the 143 level, which looked like support here, right? It looked like a nice consolidation, an area of, um, you know, um, a lot of price stability, but broke right through it. So when you're in that kind of a market, you got to be careful. And when you see the downtrend, you got to respect it. I mean, these are big names. They're not, you know, small cap names by any means. And so when you start to look at Disney here, that's a big long tail. You can see on oh, the point break was um, triple bottom break down there on March 31st. Again, got to be, got to respect it. Uh, Netflix, we've looked at this chart many times. It's painful to watch. Uh, but we got to review it because this is like film day, right? You go back the halftime show. Uh, you don't really run films and halftime at football, but um, you do on Mondays. That's for sure. And um, consider this our Monday film review. And we know where it broke down. We've been watching this and tracking it. Um, and on that relative strength breakdown, when it starts to break, in other words, this looked like support, but look exactly what it did. It found support on the earnings release and then just let go. I mean, this is a tough game right now for Netflix. But if I go back and I look at the point and figure chart real quick, NFLX. Oh, I mean, whew, rough, 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 right? The chart's so long, it's kind of off the page. And so look where it started to break down, right? Right around this level between 580 and 400. And where did we see our breakdown? I'm sorry, 580 and 600. So right around that, right? Right around these levels, right between there. And that's kind of what we're looking at. When you look at relative strength, point and figure, and even some other cases of, of uh, moving average crossovers, you get sort of multiple dynamics playing out at, at the same time. And this on the downtrend started early. So fair warning there for sure. Now, NVIDIA is not a streaming name. It's a gaming name. But you know what? They're kind of involved in a lot of different things, including electric vehicles and other things as well. So I kind of threw it in there because it's been sort of the poster child of, of growth and uh, innovation and a lot of things going on. But today we're seeing a mixed bag. Now there's your head fake to the upside and then a, a rollover. RSI is really w well oversold, but bounced slightly. And if I go to NVIDIA here, seeing it up two and a quarter, and I, you know, we're getting a bounce here today, right? The NASDAQ's had a, just a tough time. Uh, but we're on the bottom of the range. It's oversold, starting to turn up. So again, it found support, right? Um, and maybe even broke it a little bit. But we look back at these levels. That's where these stocks are going to trade. And if I pull up NVIDIA here, NVDA, real quick. Yeah. So you can see what's happening there. It's right there, right? I mean, obviously, where the, where the breakdowns were, head fake higher and then a breakdown right around that 200 to 220 range. And that's kind of what we saw right here as well. Uh, and then obviously we're neutral plus. Now again, looking at the gauge, right? You go to Netflix, right? We're neutral plus there. It's got good earnings. All the things are great. It's just a breakdown from a, a standpoint of not only just fundamentals, but also guidance, which is part of fundamentals and looking forward. So people are taking their estimates down. They're taking our expectations down and they're making assumptions off of those expectations, right? And that's kind of what this whole business is about really. Uh, and so here we are, look at, I mean, Here's a name that's just a tough, tough one to look at now. I don't know if our symbols are updated here. They should be. Let me just see. Oh, I had it in the list. And going back and looking, we had to, you know, fill the data back in with a symbol and name change. And so obviously it's bottomed out here. Uh, but look where it started. I mean, it really started a long time ago. Now we have a weird thing. We've got a bearish name that's actually shown some strong relative strength, but just got weak again. But it's way oversold. Now, double bottom here at $27, $30 is not a fun, uh, you know, pattern, but it is a pattern that you can maybe use as a pivot point off of it. And then maybe it found a bottom here. Now, here's a great chart and a great way to look at this. When you see this start to roll over, in other words, $28, really 29, but we'll call it 28, 27, 26, you start to get into those levels. That's breaking those levels here and you're probably going to see lower levels, right? I mean, it's just the way it rolls. Roku, which is the big name in streaming, whew, um, just a rough chart to look at. But again, technicals and experts on their lows, financials and earnings, not so bad, but it, it comes up to a neutral rating, right? As you can see, it's kind of fairly balanced. And if I go look at Roku here, again, a neutral rating up 7% today, everything likes to bounce, right? You get these moves higher, you get a move from 
you know, 100 to 140. That's a 40% move. It doesn't look like that. <laughs> what it was oversold. It's just hard to trade these. You got to be right twice, right on the entry and right on the exit. And uh, this time, this particular overbought, oversold indicator kind of helps. It's not perfectly in sync with an RSI, but it's um, it's looking as if it it, it is today. And so you got to be careful, but I don't like buying stocks that are in negative relative strength trends. Um, and we'll look at Spotify real quick because I'm running out of time. And here we go. So if we go back to ACP, what do I got? I got a bearish name here, but strong earnings, but financials, technicals, and experts are weighing on this particular rating. And when did this start? Really? You know, had another head fake here, right? 248 to 300. Then it broke down and it really started to break down right around the end of the year, which, you know, I had forgotten about. Um, that's interesting that that happened really, because we were seeing stocks rally in the end of the year. But look, our, 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 our rating was downgraded and obviously continued to degrade over time, even with good earnings, right? And if I look at our, uh, our, our rating here, you can see what we were talking about, right? Good earnings, the technicals, experts, and financials are just weighing, weighing it down, right? And then we'll go look here at, um, and if I pull up Spotify, you can see where that break occurred back here, right? Right around that 220 range, kind of what we were talking about right here, right? And so, when you start to see ratings changes, you know that they broke their long-term trend. There's other things going on. So you use the multiple indicators to kind of, to kind of sort of spot check what you're seeing um, from our rating and obviously on the charts here as well. When you start to see these crossovers, sideways action, you're seeing lower lows um, break and then test it again. Look, at that's a really good technical setup where it had broken down and came back and tested that support level back here and then rolled over one more time. So you just got to be careful there. Let's look at the, the two big uh, ETFs here. XLC, which is the communication um, ETF. You can see, obviously, just having a terrible year, a terrible, terrible year. I mean, somewhere closing at around $78 roughly and currently sitting at uh, lows of 58. If I pull up XLC here, just to get a look at the overall group, um, you can see this really started to break down back uh, in September and October. Now, it didn't fully break down until it started to, again, ride the lower band, and you get your balances, lower band, get your balances, lower band. Get, you know, it, it's a repeatable pattern. So can we expect a bounce here? Sure, why not? Um, will it continue? It doesn't seem to be that the case. But again, at some point, these things do change, and you got to be ready for that. And then we'll look at XLK. Again, we don't rate them here on, uh, on, on stock charts on the ACP platform. The plugins aren't built for that, but we do rate them here. And if I pull up XLK, it's got a little bit better rating, a neutral rating, really. And kind of looking at really on its lows, very, very difficult uh, name to be associated with. But where did it start? It started at really the high bands and really very early in the year here when it started to break. Again, goes to the bands, rallies, goes to the bottom bands, rallies. It happened multiple times. Is it going to happen again? I wish I knew for sure, but the probability is on the side that of it happening. And so we could see a rally this week with the Fed news and some other things that are happening. All right, everybody, that's all we have for today's show. Thanks for tuning in. I hope this helps. Get the plug in, you know, use the multiple uh, places on ACP, the point and figure charts, you know, the regular ACP charts, your crossovers, all the indicators you have. But when you add that indicator, you can see if there's a change recently, it's really sort of an alert notifying you to a few things. One being the breakdown below the long-term trend. When we move from a bullish to a neutral plus to a neutral, you know something's technically wrong as well. So t double check that on multiple platforms just to see where the things are heading and try to stay well, stay safe. It's going to be a busy week, so stay focused too. Take care. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below. Maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're going to bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.